Hi everyone, my name is Claudia Menicola. Um, I'm a Toronto-based artist here uh, and I work at Gordsman's at College in Spadina. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about uh, an introduction to painting with encaustics. Uh, so that is wax painting. Uh, really excited to demonstrate some products we recently received at Gordsman's, uh, the RNF encaustic wax. So some of the products we're going to be demonstrating today are the RNF encaustic colors. Um, RNF is a company based in New York in the United States. Uh, they were founded in 1988 and they work in small batches and they're really focused on creating material, quality materials for artists um, with the artist in mind. Um, these are very beautiful, very, very pigmented. I'm really excited to show you how to use these today. And we're also going to be demonstrating using the Catalyst wedges. Uh, they're made of silicone, so they won't melt when you use them with the hot wax. Um, we also carry these at Gordsman's as well. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what encaustics are and why someone might want to delve into using encaustics for the first time. Encaustics uses molten wax um, tinted with pigment. Uh, there's a couple different types of waxes you can use. I personally like to use beeswax, which you can get in a pure form in a block like this. Um, and then there's also microcrystalline wax, which is a synthetic form of wax that has a slightly higher melting point than beeswax. Beeswax melts at about 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, microcrystalline wax melts at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit and the safe range for your encaustics set to would be 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So somewhere in that range, I like to set mine at around 200 degrees. Uh, that makes sure that the wax stays, stays uh, melted, which is what you want when you're starting uh, with encaustics. Wax is a non-yellowing material so you don't actually have to worry about varnishing you can just paint with the wax and it's basically like the wax is its own varnish which is really good in terms of the archival qualities of it um, which is really exciting because you can just paint and then be done with it you don't have to worry about finishing it with any sort of varnish um, there's so many different techniques you can do uh, it's really great for building up texture uh, embedding things into the wax, carving it away. There's different techniques. You can pour the wax, you can dry brush the wax. And I'm gonna be showing you some of those techniques today that I use in my own practice as well. When you're choosing a surface for encaustics, you wanna stick with something that is porous and unprimed, uh, specifically with no acrylic or synthetic primers on it because you need something that the wax is really going to absorb into. So something like an unprimed wood board or wood panel, which you can find at Gordsman's. Um, raw canvas, which you can paint on unstretched like this, or you can stretch it on a frame. Um, and then also paper. This is some handmade paper that I made here. It's very thick and absorbent, so it's perfect for gripping onto the wax. When you build up layers of wax, it can get really heavy. So something sturdy like wood is the ideal, in my opinion, for my work. I like to use wood. Um, you're also going to need some wax. So like I said, I use uh, all natural beeswax. There's no additives in this. It's just pure beeswax. Uh, we sell this at Gordsman's as well. I like to break it up into pieces in advance just to make it a little easier to melt. Um, and basically I've already gone ahead and preheated my hot plate here. That You can just use any hot plate that has a, a dish kind of like surface so that it contains the wax because you don't want it melting all over the place. Um, so I've gone ahead and pre-melted some pure beeswax. Now pure beeswax, as you can see, has a bit of a yellow tint to it. So keep that in mind when you're working with it because it will slightly tint the surface that you're painting a bit yellow. If you want something a little more translucent, you can go for a refined beeswax or microcrystalline wax, which is more of a white or clear type of wax. But I have beeswax, I like the smell of it. It smells like honey when you melt it and it's 
really nice to work with and I like that it's all natural. So the RNF encaustic paint is a beeswax with pigment and a bit of Damar resin, which is a comes from a plant as well. So it's all, all natural, um, super highly pigmented. When you're painting with these, um, you can melt them directly into the hot plate or you can scrape a little bit off and mix it into some of the beeswax to kind of change the intensity of it and it gives you a more translucent layering effect. Another way to paint with encaustics is to, I like to use these tin cans. Anything that's metal that won't melt um, is great container to put your paints in if you're mixing a bunch of different colors and you don't want them to all mix on the hot plate here. Uh, you can add a little bit of beeswax with no more than 10% oil paint. So you can actually mix oil paint straight into the wax to tint it. Again, you don't wanna go a higher than 10% uh, oil paint mixture, mixed with uh, wax because then uh, it won't dry and it becomes a little oily and harder to work with. It becomes more of an oil paint. So if you're sticking with encaustics, just a slight, slight, I like to just do a little drop of paint because you can always add more paint if you need it, but it's harder to take it away once you've already added it. So one of the most important things that I'll say about the brush choice you choose, um, they have to be natural bristle brushes. They absolutely cannot be synthetic because they will melt if they're plastic brushes. Um, so we sell these brushes at Gordsman's. Um, uh, I also have a lot of small bristle brushes. They're also, once you add the brush into a color, kind of going to be sticking with that color. Like they're not really something you can clean easily. Once I make the choice to add this brush to the white paint, it be kind of becomes like that, that paints brush permanently. <laughs> um, it just keeps it easier, keeps it uh, less likely that they're going to mix because uh, you can get really muddy colors if you start to mix the brushes back and forth between the colors. And caustics are a generally very safe medium to work with when you're sticking to the right temperature and as long as you have good ventilation like I do here in my studio. Um, if you're going any higher than that, the wax can burn and the smoke can is not very safe for inhalation. So you wanna make sure it's not smoking at any point. And if you do find that it's smoking, just turn the temperature down a little bit and let the wax kind of settle and then heat it up a little bit gradually again. Another thing is you don't want to make sure that there are no solvents used of any kind because heating solvents is not safe. You don't want that to evaporate into the air. So stick with the wax, the pigment sticks, and a slight, slight amount of oil paint if you choose to use oil paint. All right, so to get started with the, your encaustic painting, I have already gone ahead and melted my beeswax with no pigment. Um, you're gonna start with no pigment added to the wax to sort of prime the surface almost. Prime maybe isn't the right word. Maybe just create the base layer that all the rest of the layers are gonna adhere to. My hot plate's set to 200 degrees. Um, I might adjust that slightly depending how the wax is looking, but right now it's looking like it's staying melted, which is what we want. Um, I have my surface in front of me here. And I have my large brush, which I'm going to start using to uh, coat the surface of the panel with my wax. Um, and I also have some of my other tools set aside, ready to go. The catalyst silicone wedge here and my other catalyst here. And then some extra brushes. I have a palette knife that I use specifically for encaustics that I like to use to scrape into the surface. And I also use an X-Acto knife to carve into the surface as well. Um, and then I have my extra wax already pre-cut set aside to add to the hot plate if I need more wax. And of course, my RNF encaustic colors here. I have my surface here ready to go. I'm going to load up the brush with a lot of wax. And we're just going to start by dragging it across the surface and switching to the other side here just to just to coat the surface here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just wanting to get some coverage on there. And this is the layer that's going to set into the wood and absorb into the wood to allow the rest of the layers to bind on top of the, the layer that we're setting down now. And then I like to go the opposite way and 
coat the surface here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can already see how much texture is already building on the surface and it's already dry to the touch. It is warm. You just have to be careful with the heat here because it is really hot. You don't want to touch the surface of the metal. I'm going to show some of the techniques. I'm going to show how to use the RNF colors here. Um, I already have this one unwrapped. And what I like to do is just take it straight to the hot plate and just melt it right on here. This is one of my favorite colors to work with in paint. It's called graphite gray, and it really does look like, like pencil, like liquid graphite, and it's, re it's really cool. And then I have a brand new brush here for that. And you really wanna saturate saturate the brush here and you can see how quickly it like solidifies it's like as soon as you put the brush stroke down it it's drying so you can see that you can build up layers very very quickly you can do different techniques like dry brushing where you're just dragging the brush lightly on the surface and it picks up all that texture from below so if I wanted to I could I could like really create some heavy texture and layers. You can see each layer that you apply kind of takes on the form of the layer below it. So it's really easy to build up. I can even take uh, my tool here and carve into the surface. And then I like to save these little scraps because uh, carving it off. And then I like to save these little scraps because uh, carving it off and putting it back into one of my containers here to kind of reuse the wax. And I can go on top of this and it picks up on the texture or I can go in with more wax on the brush. It's a nice way to like etch into the surface. Can use my my catalyst the catalyst tools can be used right on the surface of the hot plate because they are silicone so they will not melt they're really great for mixing on the surface so these rnf paints are very opaque when used straight from the stick so they layer really nicely on top of the color below And then I can even carve into that to reveal the layers below. So you can do a lot of really cool things with the encaustics. And then if I wanted to, I could thin that out a little bit with some of the beeswax that I have on the hot plate. Add a little bit more. And then it's not as opaque get more of a translucent effect. So I'm gonna be showing how it looks different on canvas. The canvas absorbs the wax really nicely as well. mix them just like any other paint so I have like a darker bluish gray color that from mixing the two RNF colors that I'm demoing right now I also have some cans here with uh, beeswax and a drop of white oil paint There's a variety of different tip designs that these catalyst tools are made with. Um, so this one's got kind of like a, a double pointed end. And again, you can use them straight on the surface of the hot plate and they will not melt because they're silicone, heat resistant. They're great for mixing the paint around, moving the paint around. And you can even apply the, the encaustic paint 
with these tools too. Almost like a stippled effect with this particular tool. Whereas I like using my wedge for, for mixing and separating the paint, these smaller tools are good for adding texture to the surface. And these tools are different than a palette knife because they're very, very flexible. So they give you a little more looseness, whereas a palette knife is more stiff. So that's why I like to use these because a lot of my work is very loose and fluid. Whereas I use the palette knife more for, for carving because I need that sturdiness. So there, there's a lot of versatility in the tools you can use. Um, and we sell quite a few different uh, catalyst tools at Gordsman's in different sizes, different tip designs. This is my handmade paper that I made here at my studio. Um, I'll just show how the wax adheres to this surface. This is gonna be a really fun surface because the paper already has so much texture that the wax is just gonna build on to that already natural texture that's already on the paper. So you can quite literally just keep adding layer after layer. Like there's no limit to the amount of layers you can add with the encaustics here. The wax will just keep building up. Another thing I'll mention is that if you take the brushes off the hot plate, they'll get hard, but you can just uh, melt them again by leaving them on the hot plate and they'll just get soft very quickly. So if you, like this one is already pretty hard. If I just left it on the surface, it would, it would heat up right away and become flexible again. It's almost like using a squeegee, these tools. And I'll show you the, the cool texture that I'm getting from using this tool. I'm just scooping the wax up and spreading it along the surface here. So you can see in the parts where it, it's catching the color on top of the regular beeswax. And then maybe I'll take my tool here and carve into it, revealing the natural white of the paper underneath. We go in with a little bit of white on top of that. I'm gonna use this tool here again. So, so here again is some of the uh, application, how it looks on, on panel. I showed you how to embed paper into the surface. I showed the texture you can get with the catalyst tools. I showed how the paints layer beautifully on top of each other that you can carve into the surface and add more back on top. I really like doing that in my work, adding, taking away and like reducing the surface and then building it back up. And that's why encaustics are very fun and addicting and interesting to me because it fits with my practice so well. Um, and then dry brushing as well. Um, so yeah, again, uh, I don't think I've quite shown the extent of how thick you can really get these paints. You can really, really build up the surface. Um, or you can keep it as flat as you want. Mm -hmm.